This is gonna be a long one. In this video, I'll be talking about the things inherently bad with Destiny. I won't really be spending any time on the good things, but I feel like this isn't really gonna be a hate video. It might come off that way, but I've been a member of the Destiny community for years now. Um, I started off playing in the Destiny 1 beta, I've been flawless many times, I've made various videos, I've done every raid, every expansion, done pretty much everything possible in the game um, over the years, and so I feel like my opinion is just valid, uh, warranted, and just fair, and I feel like if I didn't voice my opinions, I'd be doing a disservice to the community, as someone that's been a part of it for so long. So this is mainly just a compilation of the things that will make this game from a good game into a great game, and I understand the philosophy that Bungie has, and I've accepted it, you know, catered to the casuals, but it doesn't change the fact that their community and fan base is made up of the hardcores, the ones that spend the money on Eververse, the ones that buy all the expansions and play through them and spend hundreds and thousands of hours. And I know that most of the community is made up of the casuals, and that's why they make the game for them. but. The ones that are hardcore and play the game not just for a few weeks and then go play something else are the ones that promote the game to friends, upload on YouTube, and pretty much live and breathe the game and make this game, you know, a part of their lives. And so, yeah, that's mainly what I'm going to be doing in this video, just talking about the issues in the game and what I think will fix the game and make it something that's really just good for everyone. You fix these issues, the casuals, as long as they do continue to play, will catch up to the hardcores, especially like in times like now, where there is pretty much a content drought already, players will eventually catch up, and there's going to be a level playing field for everyone. So let's get started. At this point in the video, I also want to kind of say that there's going to be some kind of raid talking, not really spoilers, I might include raid gameplay, so there might be some spoilers in here, trials as well. I'm pretty much talking completely about the end game, so if you haven't got to the end game, you don't want to hear about things like that, then click off now. The first subheading type part that I'm doing in this video is issues that impact the game negatively that should not be there. These are basically issues that are essentially game breaking in the fact that they make the game unfun, unrewarding, and unfair. Essentially that's the best way I can put it. The first point that I have is that mobility, resilience, and recovery stats are unbalanced. Because of these stats, Warlocks are essentially the best class in the game. They have the best ability with Rift which they can heal themselves, give themselves a little shooting buddy, do extra damage, and they can it helps their entire team. Unlike the Hunter Dodge, where it helps one person, you can do a little spin, reload your gun, get a melee charge, it's not anywhere near as useful as being able to stay alive or doing extra damage. The Titan Shield's the second best. You can obviously reload your guns instantly and block enemy fire. It can help the team, but obviously the Rift is the best ability in the game. While I understand that Warlocks are meant to have the highest recovery, Hunters are meant to be mobile, and Titans are meant to be strong, it's not really very balanced. So to fix this, Hunters should be able to get recovery on more of their gear, and account wide, across all characters, recovery should be increased. The regen time is very very long, very very tedious, and it should be improved across all characters. Another overarching issue is the lack of weapon rolls requiring more weapons. You cannot take away the amount of customizability and variability that Destiny 1 had by having random rolls and then not adding more guns. There's only like 10 or so weapons for each class. I mean, when I say class, I mean submachine guns, scouts, autos, that kind of thing. There's very few variability and very few guns to use, and that's what's kind of pushing people to use one or two guns, and you can see by the amount of trial stats, 98% of games use the miter, but I'll talk more about that later. So to fix this, add more guns, there's no excuse to it, you've got games like Borderlands where there's loads of guns, Call of Duty has lots of guns, they add more guns with DLCs, but Destiny's different, there should be more guns in general than just a few. Exotic armor is mostly meaningless, very few armor pieces do something useful besides ability cooldown. Bungie, have some fun with the gear. Think of wacky stuff that could also be useful. That's what exotics should be. There shouldn't be exotics that are really niche, like increased sidearm ready speed or straight ability cooldowns. There's nothing cool in this game in terms of exotic armor pieces besides the recycle ones from Destiny 1. Celestial Nighthawk, Feedback Fence, they're kind of cool. Feedback Fence is a bit more useless, but at least it's cool. And yeah, in general, there's nothing good about exotic armor, you may as well just use legendary for the most part. Armor in general is stale, and besides the aesthetics and the looks, poses practically no difference between each other. Add some customization besides the mods. 
The trials gear and the raid gear have no perks relevant to the activity. Why is there no increased agility while carrying a charge in the gauntlet or carrying pollen in the gardens? Why no increased damage against bathers or increased resilience against callus? It would just be cool to see these kind of things that makes the gear unique and like raid gear. Why is it not like raid gear? Trials gear, why isn't it more super energy when you get a revive or something like that? Something that makes the game a bit more interesting and stuff to chase for. Armor pieces are simply the same, nothing's different. And I can understand that maybe they want the customization to be universal or the differences between the armor pieces dependent on mods, but I don't think that makes the armor pieces useful and just in general unique. This is an issue that I have that I think is completely overlooked by lots of people, but if there's an emblem for number of trials flawless wins or subclass kills, then why is there not more of this? There should be things such as guided games players carried successfully or raid encounter completions. Now I understand the raid one will probably come with the prestige raid, but that guided games emblem? You know how useful that would be in promoting guarded games? You'd have way more people doing it just to get that count on the emblem really really high and say I've carried more people than you. Why wouldn't you put that in the game and that would promote a more, you know, successful community because people are helping out each other. And they're getting something in return as well. Guarded games at the moment you don't really get anything besides the emblem once that doesn't have a count on it. You should easily be able to add a number on it that counts the amount of times you've carried someone. And it's as simple as that. Token vendors suck. We should be able to trade in tokens and then pick the piece of gear we want. The whole point of having tokens in a vendor format is to eliminate RNG. So why are you completing the raid, getting no drops from bosses, and then with the tokens that you get, going into a slot machine for your loot that doesn't even drop above your level. So in general, tokens are a broken system, they need to be fixed, and you should be able to pick what you want with your tokens. That's kind of the point of them. That's how you get the full set, it eliminates RNG, and why wouldn't the bosses just drop it themselves if you want to have tokens in the first place? Doesn't make sense. Zer is completely underwhelming. A lot of players such as myself have a very, very high number of legendary shards. And while I really like the fact that there's no cap, or no cap that's been seen yet on something like shards, there's nothing really to spend them on. And while I understand cater to the casuals, you know, some players might not even have 20 shards yet. There's no reason why they can't add more stuff in his inventory. Why not add something like legendary mods we can buy, or a quest line that we can do that drops an exotic engram that's above our line, so, you know, not 270. Just something like that. Legendary shaders, something cool that just adds to him and his personality. Do a quest. You know how cool a quest line with Zer would be? It'd be awesome. Why not do something like that? This is a massive issue, I feel like. Why is there no legendary gun collection vendor? Set rolls are a thing now. Why not include their own vendor, just like exotics? It would encourage a big collection, something to hunt for, something to do in the end game, something to grind for. We could collect all the guns, all the armor, whatever. Because there's only like five armor sets or something each for each character. There's like Crucible one, a Vanguard one, one for each planet. There's not really much um, that you can get in terms of armor. And guns have set roles, so why not have a legendary vendor for them? We can collect them all. We can delete them, and they'll still be there, we can buy them back later. It would just be cool, something cool to have, cool to have and something to grind for. That should definitely be in the game, guys. Hint, hint. Where are the collectibles? Where are the grimoire? To this day, I still have no idea how to pronounce that word. But it promoted something to grind for. Now that it's been removed, there's pretty much nothing to do in terms of long-term grind. It's a big letdown. Why don't they just make grimoire in the game? And just put a little collection in the library or something like that in the tower. I understand they wanted to get rid of it because they wanted to, you know, promote more in-game story. That's fine, but there's no reason why you couldn't have included it anyway. It was just something really cool with Destiny 1 that you could hunt for and show off your kind of big penis by having a really high grimoire score. Bit of a letdown. Where are the record books? They're gone. They were a huge success in Destiny 1. Everyone likes completing their record books. Why is that gone now? You got cool rewards and they were good. Where'd that go? Lost sectors and adventures are both pointless. Once you get past like 200 light, they're essentially useless. Like there's no point to them. Farm public events get higher, it's pretty easy. They're both useless. To this day I still have completed like no adventures and I've only done a few lost sectors just cause cause they're really quick. But adventures take a while, but they're useless. I definitely like to play them just to find out more about the world, but they're just a waste of time. And uh, I don't have time for that. Strikes are meaningless. 
Why are they even a thing? I haven't played any strikes in this game besides the strikes that required you to get up to the Nightfall. And then besides doing the Nightfall and Prestige Nightfall, they're essentially useless. You get slower rewards, they're lackluster in general. I would like to do strikes, they were kind of fun in Destiny 1, especially when you sped run them, did them really quick. And yeah, but now they're kind of pointless, they take extremely long to do and you get no rewards. Just do a heroic public event on Titan and you're sweet. Or Earth. Or Io, or Nessus. You could probably do one on each planet before you complete a strike. Come on Bungie, pick up your game here, give us some legendaries, give us some guaranteed loot, give us strike scoring, just do some more stuff with strikes. I do like Nightfalls and their modifiers, and Prestige Nightfall is a good challenge, but regular strikes, what's with that? That needs improvements, desperately. This is a mini subsection where I kind of talk about little story things. So. The scannable objects are all over the place on this game. They're in the tower, the farm, earth, nessus, etc. There should be a collectible for this where you can review them in a book after you've scanned them. And it would show you a picture of what you scanned, the voice line that the ghost did, and a little text that talks about it. Why is that not a thing? That is a massive oversight on Bungie's part. It would be a great feature. You collect all the scannables and you can just review it whenever you want. Kind of like Grimoire on Destiny 1. Along with this, there should be a lore library in the tower. The tower is massive. It's so full of things to do and explore. Myself and a friend spent an hour and a half, literally last night, just jumping around and just playing hide and seek type thing, finding cool spots and all these little secret places you can get to, and getting all the scannables while we're at it. And yet the space is so underutilized. It's so big and there's kind of things to do, and it's pretty fun, but most of it's kind of what you do yourself, not stuff that Bungie intentionally put in. So, to fix this, why not put a little library? You can view all the lore, view Grimoire, because that should be in the game. Because a lot of the stuff that you scan, you're never going to read or see again unless you go back and scan it again. Massive oversight on Bungie's part. The story is good in general in the game, but they don't really put it in the game. Once again, a massive issue that they should have done in Destiny 1. We now move on over to PvP issues. So the rewards from Crucible games are underwhelming. If you intend on having a token system and intend on it sticking, more tokens need to drop from PvP match completion. It's as simple as that. You can't have only a few tokens drop for the amount of time invested in a game, which is 12 minutes of really not fun PvP. So yeah, fix that. The PvP meta is simply horrendous at the moment. It could be argued that it requires more skill but in reality, all it does is promote four people running around in a pack together and putting one bullet each into every person. And there are pretty much no individual plays to be made. Solo queuing is practically unbearable. It's unplayable. A solo queue playlist needs to be added. But to fix the meta, increase time to kill. Ever since Destiny 1 beta, Destiny PvP has been shitting the bed. It's really gotten worse since then. Ever since Destiny 1, you could just put a linear graph that just goes up, just goes up, and that's the time to kill, taking longer and longer to kill someone. Why did they even do that in the first place? Gunfights are shit. It's basically who has the best recovery, and that's basically how you win a gunfight, because you make someone one shot, if they can regen their health quicker than you can, they'll win it. That's, that's a 1v1 gunfight. Other than that, if you come up in a 1v2 gunfight, there's no way you're winning that. Not a chance. In any other game, PvP, if you were a better player, you would kill both those people. But in Destiny 2, nope, that's not a part of the game. Meta needs fixing, mainly the time to kill. That's my biggest gripe with it. Because of the lack of cool individual plays to be made, Crucible is just boring. The meta is boring. Who wants to play a meta where you have to take 20 bullets to kill someone? It takes an entire magazine of an SMG to get a kill, sometimes even more if you're missing bullets. It's boring. And it's still boring even with you, when you're playing with a team and stomping. And I know that they've reduced it well, they've changed it so it's not, you don't get kills or assists anymore. It's kind of just kill assists, but it actually counts as a kill. Kind of weird, like Overwatch. It's not really very fun. The game's not Overwatch. It shouldn't play like Overwatch in terms of time to kill. It's like you're versing a bunch of Reinhardts. And you're playing on a D.Va. You're doing no damage. It sucks. Fix it. PvP is still laggy. Why is this a thing in 2017? Bungie! You said that it's connection based matchmaking. Why do I still get put with laggy lo lobbies? And as well, why are connection bars not a thing anymore? I can only see my own connection bars and I can't see the other team's connection bars or my teammates. 
How do we know who's lagging and how do we know who to report for lagging? You have a bad connection report feature in the game, so why can't we utilize it? It's very silly. That needs to be fixed. As soon as someone leaves in PvP, it's almost impossible to win because of the high time to kill. It takes like, a solid gunfight is like 2 seconds, at least, for the most part. A lot of the time it can be longer, especially in a 1v1. So as soon as someone leaves, it's almost impossible to win because they just outman you. Other games, you can win when you're a man down. Because the time to kill, you're a better player, you're going to win. This game, it's really impossible to do that. So there needs to be a leaving penalty to games, even in quick play. It's not fair. When your teammate leaves, it's bad. And even if you're versing a team where there's only three players and you have four, it just becomes boring for you because there's practically no one on the map because it's now 4v4 for all game modes, not 6v6. So that I could talk about the fact that it's 4v4. I don't really have a big issue with the fact that it's 4v4. But there needs to be a penalty for leaving because it just makes it really slow and boring if there's only three people on a team. Trials is cool. You actually get loot, but it's also somewhat underwhelming at the same time because of the meta. It's pretty boring a lot of the time. You can't really make cool plays. There's a couple cool plays that can be made, but other than using abilities, as far as gunfights go, there's not really much you can do. Here's the good part. The Mita multi-tool. I don't think it's actually OP. And here's why. There's literally no other good guns in this game. It's not like it kills instantly, it's actually a 5 bullet headshot, and it's a scout rifle. You have to tap 5 bullets into someone, someone's head to kill them. It's just consistent. It's got third eye, high cowl, increased movement speed. All good perks, nothing that hurts the gun. And But it doesn't have really anything that makes it super duper incredibly insane. It's just really consistent, and nothing else in this game is good. You can't really say... Oh, this gun's got massive range, but really low stability. If you can control the recoil, it's the best gun in the game. There's nothing like that in this game. There really isn't. You could argue that SMGs are kind of like that, but they're actually shit, anything beyond point blank range. So, next point. SMGs are underwhelming in PvP and PvE. They just suck pretty much in every facet of the game. Very rarely will you get more than like two kills with a mag, and that's a real stretch. You have to be pretty much perfect, and the players usually need to be weak. Flinch needs to go from PvP in general. High caliber rounds, very annoying. I know I have a very good shot. I don't know why I'm losing gunfights at long range. Just kidding, I do know it's because of Flinch. And when you get hit by bullets, it kicks retardedly and it's very random and it's not fun. Shouldn't be in the game or at least reduced a, a fair amount. And that, that'll help killing miters, especially at range with other guns such as different scouts, different pulses. Because why would you use any other scout other than a miter? Because it's got high cow, more flinch. I don't think it's OP though, I do think it needs some tuning, but not in its intrinsic perks or its intrinsic skill tree. I feel like it needs to be in line with the rest of the guns and to do that you bring the other guns up instead of nerfing it. My last little point on PvP is why are there no good snipers? The best sniper in the game is a rare, a blue sniper, just because it's got snapshot and a good scope, and that's a bit silly. Uh, I could bring up a couple little things, grenade launchers are a bit poor. As far as far as power weapons go, rockets, shotguns, and swords are all really good. The rest are pretty average. Fusion rifles are actually also pretty good if you get a good one. Um, but other than that, I don't really see a point in having two kind of assault rifles or two auto rifles or anything like that. You kind of need a mix and match. So put on a scout, put on an auto, one for long range and close range. That's just a little tip if you guys aren't aware. We now move on to the quality of life issues, so I'll try and keep this a bit shorter. We'll see how it goes though. But first off, we start off with no subclass customization. It's not really the biggest problem because I know that there are some trees, such as the hunger tree for void walkers, that synergize quite well and are actually pretty good. But it's also kind of a bit disappointing to see there's pretty much no customization to be had as far as your class goes or your subclass. A bit upsetting there. Ability cooldowns in general should not be as long. It's a bit stupid to wait over a minute for a grenade when there used to be something that was just cannon fodder in Destiny 1. You'd wait like 20 seconds for a new grenade. And it'd definitely promote faster time to kill in PvP as well. You increase the amount of abilities you get, more kills that'll be made with grenades, melees, supers, etc. It'll speed up the pace of the game, not make it as slow. The lack of vault space for mods. The entire mod system in general is just bad. Why have specific mods for specific slots when you can just combine them? So there shouldn't be one for like arms and reload speed when you can have 
the exact same one for legs and reload speed, something like that. Bit silly, should just combine them into one. Mod application and acquisition is way too expensive. I've played a lot of this game and I'm constantly running low on glimmer. It's very annoying to spend 5,000 glimmer every time I want to upgrade something. That's a lot of glimmer. And to buy them as well, also 2,500 per rare mod. That's times three rare mods, you have to get three of the exact same, which is 7,500 to combine that into a legendary. Then the 5,000 on top of that, that's a lot of glimmer just to apply and make a legendary mod. So that needs to be fixed, desperately. Along with this, if you delete a piece of gear that you no longer want that has a mod on it, it should at least dismantle into mod components. Very silly that that isn't a thing. Because of the mod component issue, kinetic legendary mods are way too difficult to obtain. You can only get them from mod components. That's why it's such a big problem. And it's very hard to get kinetic legendary mods. It really should not be this way. It should be just like the other mods where you can simply buy them. It makes it very difficult to upgrade primary weapons. The vault in general is messy. It's clunky. Once again, like Destiny 1, Dim is a much better option. Exotic quest should not take up inventory space. Should be a set mission or quest space in the inventory, but not actually in your weapon slots. General bugs such as the prestige knife or not working. Trials having a map exploit. Emperor seal keys not working. Vault keys being deleted. That's not really acceptable. I know that they'll fix that, but it really shouldn't be in the game. Should have never occurred in the first place. Titan shoulders are ugly. Why are they so ugly and big? Not necessary. Tether doesn't do an additional damage to bosses. Why is that a thing? That's what Tether's always been used for, and that is very silly. Does not belong in the game. Should do additional damage, 1.3 times, something like that. You get a black screen whenever you load into a game sometimes, or load into the tower. It can literally last longer than 5 minutes. I always have to quit my game. And as far as quitting my game goes, I get my game to crash a lot. I constantly get error codes. The whole thing, like the, not like an in-game error code, my game just crashes. Why is that a thing? I don't know what's going on there. I don't really have a solution other than please fix it. I'm not a developer. The farm is redundant at the moment. Potential events can occur in the future. Not really sure what its purpose is right now. So, I don't know. Maybe add some stuff to the farm because it's kind of left behind in the story upgrade part of the game and then you never see it again. Why can't you track friends and your fire team on the map? It's a great new feature that you can see the map and all the public events that are spawning and fast travel and stuff like that. Very good feature. But why can't you see your friends on the map? Be very useful for whenever they transfer uh, or teleport to another location on Earth, for example, to go to a different public event. It would be handy to see where they are. As far as the raid goes, I don't really have any issues with the encounters or anything like that. I think they've got cool mechanics, pretty easy. Um, the rewards could definitely be improved, hopefully that happens in the hard mode raid. But why is ammo a really griping problem in the raid? I should not be running completely out of all three ammo types. I think this is kind of more of an oversight on Bungie's behalf, because synths are not a thing anymore. You don't get ammo upon checkpoint completion, which you kind of should, especially with this issue at the moment. And yeah, it just makes it an unnecessary thing. You should never run out of kinetic and energy ammo at the same time. It's very silly. Another thing that Bungie kind of overlooked and I feel is kind of lazy is how easy a platinum trophy is on this game. They've added something like 11 gold trophies and like zero bronze. What's with that? In terms of other games, that's just really silly. It's just easy trophies and an easy platinum. It should at least be a challenge. Why is there no flawless raider or something like that in this game? Bit silly, bit overlooked. Duplicate exotics, very frequent. There should be a reduction in this. I don't know what the algorithm's like, but I know that there was definitely an improvement in Des Destiny 1, especially with something like the legacy engrams, where you'd pretty much never get duplicates. Why is that not a thing in this game? I swear I've had Lunar Faction boots about 11 times, and I am very, very bad with getting exotics. Like, I barely get any, and I always get duplicates whenever I do. I don't know if that's just me, but that's something that shouldn't be in the game. Planetary materials are essentially useless. Why do we even bother picking them up if they only cash in for like one reputation or like a tenth of a token turning? You barely rank up at all and it's not worth picking them up. So that's essentially the video. Yep, that's about it. I have probably could think of some more stuff. There's always new things I think of that this game definitely needs to improve, but I mean this is like a 1500 word just dot points of things that could be improved that I was kind of reading off of and then elaborating on a, a bit as well. But obviously, this game's got a really good foundation. I don't intend on hating on the game, the story was good. This is mainly talking about the end game. This is pretty much only the end game, really. 
and to keep the fan base there, you need to have a good end game. That includes the casuals. <laughs> the casuals are going to buy your game, you get your money, cool, but wouldn't you like to keep them around as well playing your game? It doesn't really make sense to me. I know Bungie, or well, more or less Activision, just wants the money. Um, that's fine, that's how they've always been, but I don't know. There's so much more that could be improved, and it would honestly just make this game from, instead of being like a 7 out of 10 or whatever most reviewers give it, 7 or 8 out of 10, it could really honestly push it up closer to a 10 out of 10. Like. As far as Endgame goes, you fix all these issues, and they're not hard fixes. A lot of them are really not very hard fixes. You fix the issues, the game's a lot better. Now, I know that more problems could also arise from fixing these. I don't know, there's a lot of issues, a lot of things that are potential to change, especially in the coming weeks, months, years of this game. But there's a lot of issues that aren't really acceptable in the first place. So anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you have some other issues that you think are really just integral to, you know, the game that really need to be fixed, drop them into the comments. If you don't agree with me, that's fine. There's obviously some things you hopefully will agree with me with. I think I have a very, fairly broad and specific view on like everything. I think I understand the game well. And I've played it a lot. Like I'm 3 or 5 light on all three classes already. I've played Destiny for a long time and hopefully you guys can understand that's my opinion. If you don't agree, that's fine. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. Have a good one.